Okay, we are here again. And I gotta admit, that stuff, the tagline should be, you put that stuff on everything. That's right. I mean, beat it up, come on. You can literally use that stuff on everything. I have it on the wheels, the glass, the convertible plastic top, back the window. Back there? Yeah, the back window. The metal, did you put it on the metal, the metal? bumpers and stuff? Everything, everything. So, hey, as it goes, there it is. Um, thank you again for tuning in to another live detail class. We are happy to have you here. Don't forget, like always, put your name and where you're from down in the comments because my map is on the way. I ordered that and I can put your little dot where you're at in the world so that way we can turn around and monitor everywhere we're at. I think it's a cool little side project I have going on down here. Mike's has a lot bigger side project than what I have down here. Um, explain, what is this lovely Corvette, two-door Chevy, as you like to call <laughs> that it? That old two-door Chevy. Yeah, what is this doing down here? Or the plastic fantastic. Oh, there, there you go. <laughs> uh, this is a 1965 Corvette Stingray. All right. And uh, this belongs to a local car enthusiast, and he brought it to me. Uh, asking if we could do anything to make it look a little bit better. And the problem it had was uh, whoever did the custom, whoever did the custom paint job, step up here. Uh, the, whoever <laughs> did the custom paint job, they uh, sanded it down and left sanding marks, DA sanding marks. And they didn't actually get the orange peel out. And you have pictures of this, right? I, oh yeah, I've got yeah. a full article I'll be writing that shows everything I did, including uh, polishing all the wiper marks out of the glass. And our, the back glass. The back, the back, the back Which window. I, I helped him on that because right. he was struggling. The, <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the back window on these removable hardtops is plexiglass. It's a very soft plastic. And um, someone tried to restore it and whatever they use, it looks like it probably removed the scratches that were in there Brillo and replaced pad. it with fresh scratches. Yeah, and Brillo pad. It was clear, but you couldn't even see through it, you know? So I machine sanded the inside, machine sanded the yep. outside. That's where I helped him at yep. because he was, I can't get him out. I'm like, you might be on the inside. <laughs> so yeah, he did come along and uh, point out I was a savior. You pointed out the obvious. I, I pointed out the obvious. I would have figured it out. But then I compounded it with a 510. Yes. Uh, ACA, and then I polished it with 520 and then uh, put the beaded up on it. That's a hell of a segue into the reason why we are here. We yep. are covering, as you can see, the beautiful, let me do my Vanna, all right? Because okay. you've had a lot of practice at sure. it. Sure, yeah, sure. Should I do the Vannas like you do on the videos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like this. Yeah, it's like that, see? Let's We're see. like. That. But no, we'll be discussing, this is a hot topic, you guys, a lot of people have been asking for this video. Uh, what's the difference between AAC or ACA and AAT? Yes. So Mike is going to give you the dirt, per se, or the, the ceramic, ceramica, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to try to go over and explain what the difference is. So um, it's not that complicated, but a lot of people have questions on it. So we'll just cover all those. And, and then the bigger picture was, is after this thing got sanded down, I used the ACA products to compound and polish it. And then I put a ceramic coating on it and it's leaving tomorrow morning. And I know one question, there's while I think about it, because I just popped in my head, you can mix these together. If you want to use the 500 with the 520, you can. Oh, you, yeah, you don't yeah. want to mix them together. No, 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 I mean, like, if you use the, this <laughs> compound, then you can use yeah, this yeah, pump. Yeah. All right, because I know that is a big yeah. question that a lot of people yeah. ask on yeah. our, our detailing uh, yeah. society and so forth. That, yeah, it's like, no, you don't have to use just one or just the other thing. You can actually mix them together, and there's always the hot sauces that are in there, too. So let me get back over here. Oh, like always, please like, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends about us. We really appreciate it. All right, now I'm going over here. Okay, and uh, I just posted, I sent you the link to my brand new article. I have it on here. Okay, so um, the, that article is, what's the difference between the ACA and the AAT products? And Do you want me to bring that up right uh, now? You can show them where it's at. It's on the 3D Detail Talk forum. You know, the, the, uh, I love Facebook and I love Instagram. But the problem is, is they won't hold meaty content. They, uh, you know, I write fairly in-depth articles that have a lot of pictures. And on those two interfaces, all you can do is put a little text but you know in a little pile with a bunch of pictures it just doesn't work for education purposes so it's on the on the 3d forum i am posting it to the comments right now and um but here's the deal look uh, um 3d they make their own abrasive technology they take the we raw, 
Yes. We're part of 3D. Yeah. We. You, say, you, you yeah. said they. They. Well, we. <laughs> okay. We, we here at 3D, we make our own abrasive technology. So most of the products you find on the market that are, and here's what, first, let's start with this. Here's what has abrasives. Compounds, polishes, cleaner waxes, or what everybody calls an AIO, an all-in-one. Uh, they have abrasives in there so they can remove defects and create beauty. You know, th that's the big pitch. We're trying to make things like this look beautiful. And uh, at some point, you know, paint gets uh, swirls, scratches, water spots, oxidation, uh, sanding marks. And the way we take something that looks ugly, make it look beautiful, is we abrade the surface to level it, then we restore the gloss, and then you have a beautiful finish. So that's kind of the gist of that. But what makes, you, what makes 3D unique is we make our own abrasive powders from the raw materials, and ah. we take the raw materials and convert them first before we make the powder. So uh, this is called a vertically uh, incl inclined marketing or co uh, manufacturing company. We start with the raw material and we end up with the product that you, the enthusiast or the professional can buy. Whereas a lot of companies, they don't do that. They've got to buy their powders from one of the big companies. And that means most of all the products out there are using the same abrasive technology. The only thing that changes is the chemist who makes the liquids, which then becomes the formula. And that's all kind of in that article I shared there. So what is the difference? Okay, so um, if you look in that article, uh, Yancey, you'll pull up a, um, a table that shows year by year which products were introduced. All right, well, hold on. Let me uh, come back this way just a little and bit. And I was going to say, I could probably pull them up here and from memory put them in the right order. Um, All right, but I have your article up right now, and okay. the table is up right now. Okay. So you can talk and they will see. Okay, so our, our first or our early products were our AAT products. Those are the um, adaptive abrasive technology. And what that means is, besides the powders, you know, the powders are the abrasives. Uh, powders are what the chemists refer to as abrasive technology. I always call it abrasive technology. I guess I should call it powder technology. But that is the abrasives. All our abrasives are submicron. We make them all ourselves. Um, but besides the powders, when you, when you have a bottle of product, you also have the liquids. That's in that, in the, together, the powders and the liquids create the formula. And what the chemists at 3D have done is they've played with the liquids and created liquids that actually work in synergy with the powders to enable the abrasives to do their job easier. And that's what it means by adaptive abrasive technology. It's not just powders grinding on paint. It's a complex synergy of the powders and the liquids that are working together to abrade the paint. So it's two things, plus the action of your machine and the physical contact of the pad. So it's top shelf abrasive technology, the AAT products. And uh, if you look at that table and you go fast, for or fast forward into the future, two inch went ahead and created a new type of abrasive powders. And that is the ACA, the Alpha, Alumina, Alpha Ceramic Alumina abrasive technology. And this is, in, you know, in simple words, when people say, what's the difference? Well, the difference is, is the, the new products use a more refined abrasive technology. It's, it goes through more processes, and so it takes longer to make. And every time you do something like that, it ends up costing more. So you have a faster cutting, nicer finishing, easier to use, more friendly, longer open time product. And it costs a few more dollars to get the best. And that's the primary difference. All the products are great. They all work great. So there's something for everybody's budget. If you want the best, you want the ACA products. If you want great products, then you go with the AAT products. Right. Makes yeah. sense. Um, now, can you just like elaborate a little bit further between like I see that we have one in here and 505. So they're let me all... come around so I can kind of see them and I'll explain right. exactly what they are. OK, because I would have put these in a different order than you did. <laughs> I put them in numerical order. By oh, alphabetical oh order. I would have put them in a different. But numerical that works. OK, so over here in the ACA products, we've got this is called one. OK, and um, it is a hybrid compound polish. And what this is for is this is primarily for detailers or enthusiasts, people that aren't going to do any sanding. So they need a great compound, but they can also use it as a polish. All you got to do is change the pad. 
for more aggressive cutting, use a wool pad on a rotary or a foam pad on, a, on an orbital or on a rotary. And then for final finishing, switch to a softer finishing pad. And you can tackle just about any car in any paint system with this. And that's the reason they give it the name, one product. This one product will do it all. Or as Tunch always likes to say, all you need is one. Yeah, he sings the Beatles song, <laughs> all you need is love, but we sing it, all you need is one. Okay, uh, so that's the one product. And something that people really like about this is that it has, in, in the industry, what chemists call open time. Okay, now we detailers, we always called it long buffing cycle. It means you can buff forever, it never dries up, it doesn't become dusty. What chemists call that is open time. So there, I'm just, I'm educating. If you hear someone talk about a product that says it has a long open time, that means it doesn't dry up, it stays wet on the surface, and it doesn't dust. This has an incredibly long open time, probably the longest open time of everything, anything on the market. It never dries up, it buffs forever, and the wipe off is always super easy. Now, I, you just led me to a question that probably might be asked. Is this diminishing abrasives or non-diminishing abrasives? Um, you know, I've never bothered to ask that question. I know um, it's sub-micron particle size. The, the honest truth is even things that, are, um, that don't break down, I mean, every, see, the thing is, is everything breaks down sooner or later, including you and I. We break down, okay? So, you know, instead of focusing on the minutia like that, just use the product and see what great results you get and who cares okay. if it's diminishing or non-diminishing. Okay. Offhand, I don't know. Tunch is watching this, he can let me know. Okay. But here's what I do know is, is look, even diamonds can break down, see? So, so to try to focus on what they are is really a non-issue. Look at the performance of the product. No, I agree. I just know a lot of people, they get hung up on that type of and stuff And I've written there. a lot of articles on yeah. that topic, yeah. you know, super micro abrasive technology and, and the diminishing abrasive technology. I mean, I probably have more articles, in-depth articles on abrasive technology than anybody breathing. So I get the interest in it, but offhand, I've never bothered to ask because I didn't care because I just focused on the results of the products. All right. Okay, this is 500. So this is an extra... The rest is our extra cut compound. It's a fast cutting compound. And it, it was originally designed to be used with wool, but you can use it with wool and foam pads. And again, if you look at this product line, um, these, we, since we don't have the large bottles here, you don't see back there, see how the bottles are green? Our body shop bottles and the large size all come in green. This is a body shop tool. So if you come down here and look at this, where it says cuts P1000 or finer sanding marks. Okay, so something I wanna clarify, because I've already seen some confusion out there in the marketplace. When, when we 3D talk about a product and what level of sanding marks it will remove, that is in the context of the body shop industry. So in a body shop, you have people putting fresh paint on a car, so it wasn't baked on at the factory at over 300 degrees and it's hardened by the time the car gets to the dealership. We're talking about fresh paint. And also, body shop technicians use wool pads on rotary polishers. Okay. So that's just, a lot of power. Spin around here, I gotta move. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk down here because our magical you know, electric saving lights keep turning off when nobody moves in the area. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah, is getting the, fixed. Those are yeah, getting, okay. those are getting get okay. fixed. So, so um, uh, all of our body shop lines, at least in larger ones, they have this green color. This means body shop is body shop safe. And it's a product that's formulated for professionals in the body shop industry. And what people in the body shop industry do is they paint cars, they sand them, then they buff them. And that initial buffing process is a wool pad on a rotary polisher. So when we say this takes down to P1000 sandy marks, it will with the wool pad on a rotary polisher in a body shop situation. And I saw a gentleman recently talk about how he tried, I think, the 510 with the foam pad on an orbital polisher, and it didn't remove the setting marks, but that's, that's not how the product was intended to be used when we say we'll remove P1000 sanding marks. So keep that in mind in context. Okay, so then the next product you have up here is the ACA 510. This is the premium rubbing compound. Okay, this is our best compound on the market right now. And this product was specifically formulated to cut hard clears fast. And anybody out there watching this video that's ever come across a really hard clear coat, you know the problem. It's hard to get water spots or swirls and scratches out of it because the paint's so hard. So Two Inch created this product specifically for hard clear coats, but you can use it on anything. So if you have a really hard paint and it works fast on that, how fast do you think it would work on a normal paint or a medium paint or a soft paint? Uh, Boom. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, this is my go-to. Now, 
just as an aside, this Corvette back here has what I would call, I wouldn't call it soft, but it's not hard. It's, it's if you had hard, medium, and soft, I'd say it's between the medium soft. S defects buff out easily with 510. It's, you just look at them and they're gone. So, so very fast <laughs> cutting. Was that easy. <laughs> okay, now watch, long open time. What's that mean? Long yeah. buffing cycle, won't dry up, easy to wipe off, no dusting. So that's the 510, and it can be used with any type of tool, rotary, orbital, gear-driven, free spinning, any type of pad, wool pad, microfiber pad, foam pad. So very, very versatile product. Now this is its twin, or its, its roommate, or its, its bunk buddy, 520. So this is the finishing polish, okay? So in a body shop situation, most, most guys are gonna want a compound and a polish. And so these use the same abrasive technology and like the 510, this is very fast uh, cutting on the polishing side. So a lot of times after you compound a car, the fibers over here, if you want to show the wool pad, the fibers on a wool pad, when you're using great abrasive technology, the fibers themselves will leave a hologram pattern or a hologram scratch they pattern in the paint. They instill their own mark. The, yeah, the fibers themselves leave a mark in the paint. So when you want to get those out and you want to get them out fast, you know, 520 will take them out very fast. It's a fast cutting, high gloss, high shine polish. And that's kind of the difference between it and 502. So here's, here's our early first polish. Here's our newest polish. And the difference between this and this, they both work great, but this will remove uh, swirls and scratches on the polishing side faster than this. They'll both finish out with super high gloss and clarity. Okay. This one costs a little more. It takes more time, more um, well, due to the process that it, it goes takes more create. processes to create the powders. Okay, so I went to those are all the ACA. Now we come over here to the AAT. So this was our um, this is our 501 compound, and um, again it uses great abrasive technology. It says right on here it cuts down to P1000 or finer, um, and again that's with the rotary polisher with a wool pad. Uh, low dusting or zero dusting, long open time. Well, all easy of ours are, are very. No dusting. Lo zero dusting, low dusting. Okay, and then the 502 is the companion. So before we launched this line, if you wanted a good compound on polish, you bought both of these. You bought the 501 and the 502. And those are the AAT or adapter. It's always a good thing to buy things that are paired up with one another because it's more of a system. It, it's, well, it's a system. Yeah, they, yeah they, they're, the, the chemists formulate one to work after the other, to build on the results the first product created. And then we have over here, this is the 505 and the Speed. And these are similar products in that these are both AIOs. Can you explain that for those okay. people that may not know? So an AIO, is the, what that means is all in one. So it'll cut, polish, and protect. So it's like using a compound or polish and wax in one product. And uh, the 505 is more has more um, abrading of power than the Speed, so it can tackle uh, more defects, and it's actually a body shop tool. It's body shop safe. It does have Montan wax in it. Which is our epoxy. Is, is our, like our epoxy, but it's fresh paint safe is because the Montan allows the paint to continue to out to gas. And then speed, to my knowledge, is probably, even though there's no way to statistically prove it, it's probably the most popular all-in-one on planet Earth. Everybody that tries that finds out right away, this is the go-to product if you just want to do one step, Remove the swirls and scratches, polish the high gloss, and leave behind wax protection. And the cool thing about both of these products is how easy they wipe off and, and the gloss and the slickness they create. So if you had to choose one, most people get by speed, but if you want a little more cut and power, then you want the 505. And, and all these are available in these eight ounce bottles, 16 ounce bottles, 32 ounce bottles, and I think most of them are also available in one gallon. Well, the jars. 510 and 520 and 501 and 502, I don't think are in 16. It's just the eight and the 32s. Eight 32s and gallons. Yeah, and gallons. Now, the differences between, like we were talking about uh, the multi-purpose ones, the one and the 505 and speed, let me pull these out. Yes. Is the main difference between these guys is these two leave protection 
where this one does oh, not leave any great protection. point so if you want to put a ceramic coating on a car you got to stick with this one because these are going to leave wax behind and it, it you know the, the the question comes well can i just use a panel wipe to remove the wax well the problem with that is they make the wax to bond to the paint so well that how would you know you removed it you, you there's no way to know so if you plan on doing a ceramic coating you've already ruled out using these products you're back to these products right here yeah i mean why remove some protection that you already paid for when you don't have to, when you can buy something that also, you don't have to do an extra Yeah, step. but I would think of it more if I'm going to put a coating on, I just want to use products that are dedicated to just Agreed. correcting paint, Agreed. not leaving any protection behind. Agreed. So, did you want to do any demos? You know, I, I, uh, I thought if anybody wanted to see anything, the viewers out there, I mean, I'm happy to show up. But, you know, well, why don't you, you got 1500 grade over here, because you do have the sanders and everything over here. These sure. are what you use during the Corvette, correct? Exactly. I'll know to plug this in. All right, so I, then, I get that. Then what we'll do is while he's setting that up, um, we can turn around and we can show you how strong these are. I love a challenge, you know. You love a challenge? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go get 60 grit. Let's see you remove <laughs> it. Okay, so this is our this is our DA sander. This is the 3D brushless electric sander. It comes with a six inch vacuum plate, it actually has a vacuum attachment if you want to hook this up to a vacuum and extract all the dust instead of getting it all over the shop. Um, basic uh, operation is you turn it on and you got an up and a down speed. Usually I bump it up until I see good pad rotation for sanding and then leave it there. I don't go all the way to the top, which you could. Um, the key it's to sanding, this... not grinding. Yeah, the key to this is right here. See how I put... A, some marks on there. The key to the 3D sanding system, because it consists of the sanding discs, the interface pad, and the sander, but the key is really the microscopic hooks. And the reason those are key is because the sanding disc, the paper itself, the, this disc, is incredibly thin. It's thin like a piece of paper, okay? So thin it didn't even oh, focus. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, and here's how this works. When you, when you have really tiny microscopic micro hooks, and you got a thin little sanding discs. We're going to just assemble this over here. I've, or, I've already got an interface pad on here. But what that does is it keeps, it focuses, it, it focuses all the sanding action on the highest parts of the imperfections you're trying to remove. So usually it's orange peel or some form of surface texture or what I call modeling. And wouldn't that also <coughs> help keep the, I know I've used some Velcro backing plates that are very big. Then, after yeah, the, you, then you could actually induce your own like little pattern in the Exactly, well all that. kinds of things start to take place when you have the wrong, um, um, the wrong Velcro. So let's see if we just could see the a larger there's a larger hook. So Velcro is the, uh, is the brand name, but it's hook and loop. So this is the hook, and on the back of a pad is the loop. And so most backing plates and most interface pads have very large hooks. And what that does is it allows for lateral motion. It right. also allows for vertical motion. And it enables your, if you use the wrong hook, the sanding disc will go in and out of the orange peel. Orange peel looks like hills and valleys. And the goal when you're sanding to remove orange peel or any surface texture is to knock the tops off and stop when you get the, the highest portions removed so you just leave the lowest portions. But what that does is it, get, it reaches the goals of flattening out the paint while leaving more paint on the car. And that's the part everybody forgets to explain. The whole reason that you use things that are a well thought out system is to accomplish the goal, create beauty while leaving more paint on the car. Yeah. Okay, so this is 1500 grit, but the key is, is really, it's the, besides the disc and the tool, it's, it starts with the, uh, the interface pad. So if you're gonna get into the system, don't think you can just use any interface pad. Now, um, this is a five millimeter. Let me turn this down, you can kind of see it here. So when you're looking at that and you see this, uh, th there's two perimeters there. The outer perimeter. Actually, hold it up against your shirt. Here you go. There you go. Okay, see the two perimeters there? The space between those two perimeters, that's five millimeter. And you can do this with any orbital polisher. I show people all the time what a 21 orbit stroke looks like and an eight millimeter orbit stroke looks like just by holding the tool in the air and letting you see the two different perimeter lines. Okay, so um, let me grab a little towel here. Okay, so I'm gonna put some sandy marks in then I'll show you how to use uh, some of the compounds and polishes. <clears throat> <coughs> Sorry, and you have what? Scratchy throat. Uh, this is 1500 grit. 15? Okay. Okay. And this cuts cuts very fast. Now there's no orange peel left on this 
uh, hood. Yeah, it's been I've, demoed oh. quite a bit. Yeah, we use the hell heck out of this up there at Mobile Tech Expo. But a couple key things about um, machine sanding. Always keep the sander moving, okay? Don't stay in one place because it's removing paint. Okay, now what you want to do after you sand a section, if you notice, I'm just doing a simple crosshatch pattern. And the reason for the crosshatch pattern is for what I call UMR. UMR stands for Uniform Material Removal. Now see the paint that's built up on there? So what you want to do is you want to wipe off the sanding dust here. That's, that's, that's a braided clear coat paint. Then you want to take that towel and just simply hold it here, kind of move it around. And that'll pull all this, this, the paint off the disc, and then you'd be ready to go back and do some more sanding. And so sanding with one of these is just a matter of always having a clean towel in one hand, and then guiding the sander with the other hand, like that. And then periodically clean the face of the pad with a uh, clean microfiber towel. And don't ever put this back down because this is sanding dust. You'll just load up the disc again. So remove this too before you start sanding again. Okay. No, okay. I think you've sanded enough. Okay, that's because I can't remember when last time we had that panel painted. So uh, it's been a couple of years. <laughs> this is a panel I pulled out of a uh, off of a car in a wrecking yard in Oregon, and I brought it down in my 1966 Chevy milk truck to Meguiar's when I worked for Meguiar's, and then I brought it to Auto Geek, and now I brought it to 3D. So I love it because it's like a perfect rectangle so it makes a great demo hood for places like SEMA and I can't even count how many people have come up to me and talked to me at SEMA and I'm standing behind this exact panel. Okay so here we've got a Flex PE14 cordless rotary. This is a Lake Country uh, wool pad. I had them actually make this for me for our boat class and uh, it's always important to try to center these as exact as you can get. Okay. The more exact you get it, the smoother it's going to be on you when you're buffing. The next thing you want to do is you always want to clean your wool pad. And the way you do that oh, let me come around. is you hold this against your leg. Okay, and I'm right-handed, so I've always struggled showing people that are left-handed how to do this. But lock that against your leg. I bring the speed up on the cordless all the way to six. And this is a spur. And you want to take and run it from here to here. Now, this pad is spinning like this. If I put it over here, it could throw it up into my eye. So don't put it over here, stick it right here. Just go around the pad like that. And I go all the way to the back. I want to make sure there's nothing in there. Sometimes I push really hard. Because um, one of the things I teach in my classes is it's the, one of the most important things you can do no matter what you're doing is work clean. If there is one piece of abrasive particle somehow trapped in here, and you bring this down on the paint, you're gonna put what I call arc scratches yeah, everywhere. And have fun chasing those out of the entire car. It's not fun. Okay. And see the black paint on here, Yancey? Yes. Guess where that came from? That came from another vehicle. The black Stinger. Oh, there you that go. That is a 427 Stinger hood, and the, 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 the car is base coat, clear coat, but the black portions are single stage. Okay, so let's just start with 510. Well, you just pull one out. We'll just do 510. This is my favorite. Okay. Now, when you're, when you're going to um, use a rotary, There's a safety seal on well, there. Well, that's because that's brand new. Oh. Oh, don't, don't, don't. It's coming off. <laughs> yeah, well, let me get you one out of the class stuff, because okay. I got that from the store. Okay, so this is from the <sighs> store up front. He's using my props from the store. Would you have 510? 510, yeah, that's my, that's my go-to compound nowadays. Uh, I, I use them all. You know, a couple weeks ago, I, I buffed a uh, 2018 Shelby GT Mustang, and I used 500 on it, cut it fast. Oh, well, you could have just reached Wiped right down there easy. behind that carton. Hold it out. But. Okay, so here's the 510. And I'm going to put down a strip of the compound. And you notice where I'm at, people. I am like in the firing line. <laughs> and uh, this is called uh, picking up a strip or a bead of product using the 10 at 10 technique. And here's how this works. Look at your pad and it's spinning. As I look down on it, it's spinning clockwise. Here's midnight, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, like the clock of a face. Now, the what face you, of a clock, you mean? <laughs> clock, face of a clock. And to pick up the 10 and 10, what you want to do is you're going to lay this down flat. You're going to bring it up to speed. You're going to lift it 10 degrees and run that in at 10 o'clock. And here's what's going to happen. As you, as you bring that bead in, the pad spinning this way. It's going to pull the product into the pad instead of throwing it everywhere. All right, my lens will be the guinea pig. And plus, you'll look like a real pro. 
just like that. Then spread your product out over the area that you want to work. And then what I show is just kind of go up on edge. And there's a couple of reasons for that. It's really, I mean, do I make this look hard? It's really easy to control a wool pad on a rotary um, when you're up on edge. If you try to hold this like this, it's going to want to yank you around all over the place. It's going to tire you out. And it just isn't any fun at all. So I always like to make working on cars fun, <laughs> especially when you got to do like a complete buff out on a car. It's going to take a long time. Make it fun. Now, one thing I would say, Yancey, is when you start out with the dry pad, and even though this pad's been used, it's it going to take a little bit of product. To yeah, get it's it. going to suck up some of the part because it's dry. In, in the real world, by the way, I would never stop at 1,500. I would never stop at 1,000. We make 2,500. Right. I would finish out at 2,500 because that just makes the, the buffing faster and easier. Okay, let me put a little more compound down. Do you remember how many passes you just did? Oh, I wasn't even counting. I think you did like four, I think. Okay. And on the P14, I usually go up to the three here. All right. Three, four, and then just let that rotary do the work for you. And you can already see. All the sanding marks are gone. We've actually positioned this in a way that I can't, it's hard to find the overhead lights to, um, <laughs> it's like a monitor defect removal. Okay. You need a, I think I, I think I got them all. Let me just make another pass. From what I can see, you, it looks like you got them all. There and at this right point, there. if I were to continue buffing on a section of the car, I would take and clean my pad. So I'm always clean when working with wool and rotary. Uh, it makes everything easier. Okay, so sanding marks are removed. Right, There's here. a few right here that I need to get out. There's your light. And what's left is hologram. So we were talking earlier about how the fibers of the wool pad. Right, right there. Now go back towards you. Leave there a, you go. There leave you go. a hologram pattern. But it's a very shallow hologram pattern. So it's really easy to pull out. So let me fire up an orbital polisher here. And then we're going to switch to 520. 520. Uh, for this, I will need an extension cord. Well, there's one back there. All right, let me. Well, he's doing a real that. quick lesson for everybody: when you're when you're buying expensive tools like the flex tools we use here, do not use them with the cheap extension cord. You will burn up the motor. These are the Pro Lock cords. We sell them here at the Stewart store and they are a 12 gauge wire. So they are able to pass all the electricity through the cable needed for the tool. Right, Plus they got the really cool locking feature. Right. And on the end of this thing, when you see the green light, that means you've got a proper ground. If you see an amber light, that means you have an improper uh, ground. So then you pull this back, stick it in, won't come undone. Right. I also want to grab a, a polishing pad. Uno momento. All right. Then what I was showing you just earlier was the sanding marks that were left behind uh, off to the side where you didn't polish. So we'll leave those, Mike, so we can show what sanding marks look like prior. Gotcha. And they're right there on the side of the... Um, okay. So 
foam polishing, foam finishing. And since I like the challenge, let's see if 520 with a finishing pad will pull that hologram out. Always line your pad as centered as you can to your tool. This, of course, is the original XC3401 VRG Flex or Polisher, also known as the Beast. The you can identify this from the other two beasts by the exposed aluminum head. All right. Okay. 520. Look down under the, one of these carts right here. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, sorry, we had, I pulled all those from the store so that way they're nice and clean bottles. 505. Do you need? I need 502. It would have been easier for me to not bend over and just walk back there, you know, see? 3D1. <laughs> all right, just walk back there. Okay. Let me go see, twice. the joys of life. Well, I thought we were going to use the green bottles for that. That's the reason why, but oh well. Life does go on. Okay, here's 520. All right. So, so we're now using... we are pretty much at the lightest cut pad. Oh, this is a super soft finishing uh, pad. Uh, super, super soft. And we're just going after to remove the holograms. There's four solid section passes. That looks like midnight oil to me. Wow. Don't they say black's the hardest paint to work on? Yeah, right? Yeah. There you All go. Right. I, think, no. I think for a couple smudges that we're good. Let's see here. I no. hate doing this light thing on camera because right. it, it blows everything out no, beyond. Turn it now. Now move it back and forth. Okay, so that's just after four passes with the finishing pad. Now let's move it all the way over here. Keep going, keep going. Okay, there's holograms right there. Yep. And keep going. And there's sanding marks. Sanding marks still in here. This is from yep. uh, MTE, by no, the way. No, that was, I think you just I, No, I just sanded over here. Oh, did you? Yeah, okay. these are older sanding marks. Okay, so sanding marks. Nope, come back. Go slow. All right, you lost. Put my hand where you want it there. Right, well, I, right there. Okay. There's a little bit of hologram. It's just because you didn't get out all the way far. Then go to the middle, and there's perfectly flawless paint. Smile and wave, Mike, you're on camera. Ah. Okay. Anyway, so. Pretty uh, impressive, no? 510, 520. It's just a you know, fast cutting compound, uh, fast cutting polish, excellent gloss and clarity. But any of these parts are going to work great for you. Okay. Well, let me move back over this way. Uh, let's get, see what questions we have going on. We're 42 minutes in, so we just got a little bit of demo. You know, at, the, at my last big three-day class, um, we haven't launched our marine line yet. So we sanded down a 26-foot regulator center console. The pictures are up on the 3D forum. And um, this boat came in um, with a lot of dock rash, uh, a lot of holograms. It, it only had light oxidation. Um, I usually try to get boats that look a lot worse, but at the same time, I take what I can get, and I look for big boats, 
big center console bows because that way my students don't have to crunch down or sit down and get down low to work on. They can just stand there. You know, it's a comfortable experience. And you learn the same thing. You learn more, actually. But after we machine sanded them, we cut it with 510 and polished with 520. Got a mirror finish, put on the 3D ceramic coating. Boat looked better than it was brand new. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. It is now. <laughs> it is now question and answer time. And this is where I get to go back through all of your guys' posts and put you guys up on screen. Okay, so we have my main man, man. My main man, man. He is from South Africa. He's saying, hi guys from South Africa. Glad to have you back, man. Thank you very much for tuning in again. We have Neil Walker coming in from Nashville, Tennessee. All right. Hey, Neil. Uh, Grant, our buddy Grant Hawtree, ha Haytree. Is pure wax, nanotech wax, and 3D epoxy the same as I got it with, was, by, was by my 3D rep? Pure wax, nanotech wax. I've never heard, uh, we do not have a product called Pure Tech Nano Wax. We just, we have Poxy, we have car liquid carnuba, we have paste carnuba, we have cherry wax. So those are our four wax offerings. Okay. And then we have two ceramic coatings. All right, we got Damien coming in here from Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, thanks for the educational videos, really appreciate it. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you very much for tuning in. And, oh, I left my phone over there, darn it. Uh, <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh, we got somebody, I want to say your name is Blake. I don't know I'm going to call you. Um, how can I be a part of you? I want to work with you. <laughs> you can just follow us right here. It's that simple. Just follow us. Uh, yeah, you'd have to see if the California uh, office is hiring. I mean, we're a full manufacturing plant. So, you know, there's uh, so many brands on the market. And if you were to ask, call them up on the phone and say, where's your manufacturing plant? So they would, uh, because uh, they don't have a manufacturing plant. They're a marketing company. They have to buy products from companies like 3D and put their label on it. Uh, but we have a manufacturing plant. What that means is there's a lot of jobs out there in the California place. You know, you, there's all different aspects of manufacturing. You could get a job. You could also get a job, you know, working in the, um, the, the managing side. You know, there's people that have to do office work. Um, they do have a training garage out there. They have a couple of staff for that. They have a, um, uh, they have a chemistry team out there. They got a material scientist team out there. So there's plenty of jobs. So here in the Stewart Place, there's three of us. There's a warehouse manager, there's Yancey, and a blue collar working class dog, me. Yeah. Woof, woof. Woof, woof. <laughs> uh, okay, we got Mark coming in here. Uh, so, with the so with the exception of one, the others aren't really made from ramital made for random orbitals. No, we never said that. We never said that. We there never said that. You can use these products by with a rotary or an orbital polisher. Okay. Uh, but but uh -oh. one thing I did say, when, it, when you see in the label it says removes P1000 sanding marks, that is in the, that's in the context of working in a body shop. Okay, so it's removing sanding marks and that is done with the rotary and a wool pad. No self-respecting technician in a body shop would sand down a 2020 Honda they just painted and then try to pull all the sanding marks out with the DA. Could it be done? Sure. Take a long time. And in the body shop world, they don't spend that kind of time. They grab a wool pad on a rotary and go to town on it. So keep that in mind. When we say it takes down to P1000, that's in the context of a wool pad on a rotary buffer, and it should be someone that knows what they're doing. Okay. Uh, the next one, I'm sorry, I have no <laughs> idea what your name is. I see you're speaking here in Russian and I will go through <laughs> Google Translate and I'll answer your question here after the broadcast is up. I'm so sorry. Uh, okay, here's another good one. Mark comes back in. One has more cut than speed, no? Uh, yeah, one has more cut, but it, it, don't look at it like that because how you should look at it is it's just more versatile. In fact, the article I just wrote, I answered the question about 505, which is the same as speed. It's just a versatile tool in that you, you change the cut by changing the pad and also changing the tool. You can get a lot more cut out of a rotary buffer and a wool pad than you can a foam pad on any brand and any type of orbital. It's just the nature of the beast when the pad is just spinning in a circle. And you always got to remember, fibers are a form of abrasive, okay? Mm -hmm. So when you have these with your compound spinning on paint, that's three things cutting for you. The abrasive, the, the compound, the fibers, 
and the action of the tool, the spinning action of the tool. Okay, and we have Thomas coming in, our friend Kirby. Oh. Uh, hello, Mike and Yancey. Nice work with you, Rotary and the 510. So that must have been when you're doing your demo. <laughs> Yeah. You know, one thing I like about one is uh, I've shared this story before just real quick. One time I was uh, uh, buffing out a uh, Corvette for a gentleman in the Stuart Corvette Club here. And we had a family emergency and I had I had the entire Corvette buffed out with one. Oh, I know this story. I was getting ready to wipe it off and my wife shows up and says, we got to go. And I go, well, no, look, I got to do this. No, we got to go now. I have compound all over the car. <laughs> I had compound. I didn't wipe off nothing because it wipes off easy. And then in my head, I'm going, oh my gosh, by the time I come back tomorrow morning, it'll probably dry out and be like concrete. It'll be hard to wipe out. So the next day I came back in, I was so wrong. If, if I would say it even wiped off easier. Now, I'm not saying let compound sit on paint overnight. I had to because of a family emergency, but I'm telling you, still wiped off easy. Zero dusting. That one is really a cool product. Now, I know a lot of these people that aren't here, they may not have a garage or they might be mobile detailers yep. working out in the sun. Are all these sun friendly? They're, they're, all, they're all sun friendly, but you know, I've been typing and saying this forever. Even products that are made so you can use them in warm climates, they're still gonna work better on a cool surface in the shade. No, so, no, yeah, I yeah. that. So um, a couple years ago, I had my good friend, Wilfredo. He took my three-day detailing class and he started a business. And I tell you, this guy is a glutton for punishment. Of all the things in the world you could buff out, he chose high-end motor coaches and RVs. Uh, things like Prevost and Newmars. Ooh. He works down in Fort Lauderdale, outside in the sun. And but he, he gets paid though. Oh, he just paid well. He cleared over a million dollars in his business, and he is a speed fan. Oh, yeah. okay. that'd it's, be the perfect product for that. Product you, you don't have to come back and do it again. Well, well for, for large motorhomes, if you're not going to put a ceramic coating on it, you know, then Speed or 505 would be a great product because it's sun-friendly, easy wipe-off. So imagine a 40-foot motorhome. So that's 40 feet one side, 40 feet the other side, the that's height 80. of it. The front cap, the back cap, I mean. Yeah, that's another probably about 100 feet all together. <laughs> that's a lot of buffing. And if you ever had to use a product that wipes off hard, it'd kill you. Speed, you could do that whole motor coach, come back the next day and wipe it off and it'll virtually fall off the car. And also those high-end motorhomes are base coat, clear coat, just like this panel, just like that Corvette. If you use an all-in-one that uses, you know, junk, for abrasive technology. Rocks in a bottle. Rocks in a bottle, it's gonna look horrible. With speed, I mean, you just can't go wrong. It works on anything. I show people how to use this on things like um, uh, convertible plastic windows, uh, uh, piano plastic, you know, the little pillars on the sides of your cars, that's very soft. Speed works great. It's, again, if you're not gonna coat it. If you are gonna coat it, then, then use one. One works great, and so does 502 and 520. Right there, Any right. of the polishes would work good. Okay, um, let's move along now. Uh, we have Peter coming on here. Awesome products, love the 510. I, I think you're not the only one that oh, really likes the 510. It's such a joy to use. You know, so it's, uh, in my classes, some of the, uh, uh, usually what we do at one of the class, and we do different cars, we do different types of detailing. But one of the detailing is after you're all done uh, polishing the car, and you come back and you find what are called RIDs, random, isolated, deeper scratches. They stand out like a sore thumb because you've removed the thousands of shallow scratches around them. So then you just walk around, you take, and I just put a little mark on each little scratch, come back, wool pad rotary, take them out. Love Redo that effect. with an orbital and you're, it's golden. It's like you have a show car finish. Uh, <laughs> so it's good for doing spot repairs like that. All right, we have one of our distributors coming in from Benlo, B-E-N-E-L-U-X. How would you say that? Benelux? I ben wouldn't even try. I don't All right, know. well, I'm saying, I'm saying, <laughs> he's saying great video guys and that's gonna throw up, what do you call it? Uh, thank you. Thank you for being a vendor of ours. Uh, let's come here. Let's take that away. And oh, hey, we got Cameron coming in here. Morning, guys, from 3D Australia and New Zealand. Hey, how's it going down there? I need. We need to go there. That's what you keep squeaking. This is uh, a, the, this is the cheapest, the worst uh, fender stand I've ever had. <laughs> okay. We have Facebook user. This has to be somebody from our detailing group. Um, oh, that's one thing. If you guys are in on the detailing group, you guys can connect. So that way then I can see your names. I'm gonna put it right here in the... While you're doing that, I'll lift this up. And this is, this is the cheap Harbor Freight fender stand. And it's just rickety. Um, I can't see it. I, yeah, always oh, spend yeah. the money to buy like the heavy Oops, duty ones because they're just so much more stable. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, I just posted in the comments. If you are in the Facebook uh, chat, the Facebook group doing chats, if you want, you can get your name and your picture on there. If you just add that little plug in into your thing, so that way I can see it. Uh, I see who you are instead of saying Facebook user. Uh, so Facebook user. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, add to broadcast. Um, where are you? There we go. Uh, I'm assuming you could finish out with a rotary and proper pad. Yes, you can. Depends on the paint. As what I've been telling people, you know, I meet people who say that look, a lot of detailers are alpha males, they're ego driven. <laughs> alpha male. I'm so good, that kind of person. And I meet guys all my life, so I mean, I've been doing this over 30 years now, Yancey. And I meet guys that will say this I finish out everything with a rotary. Really? You know, um, but and the guys that say that, they never show their work, okay? They never show their work. And there's no pictures, there's no after pictures, there's definitely no pictures of something black and full overhead sun to prove what they say. So, you know, it's okay if they're all talking, no walk. But what I say is I've always believed it's possible to finish out hologram free on paint, but it depends on the paint. Some paints just don't polish that well. Yeah. So that's why we have orbitals, okay? Yeah. So you can use the correct tool for the job. Yeah, you wouldn't use a crescent wrench to move a head belt. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't use a 12-sided socket to remove a head belt. It's a six-sided socket is what you use. Use the right tool for the job. But, you know, t for, here's how I think about hey, you're it. You've already knocked that speed bottle oh, over. In, in my life, you know, I've done a bunch of um, rotary-only details, put out the pictures in full sun up on the Internet for everybody to see. But f the way I look at it is why take a chance? Just go ahead and do the last step with any orbital. You know, and, um, and the orbital action has a way of working out the hologram scratch pattern. So it's, it's just not going to be a factor. It's not going to be an issue. Okay. You know, but I do get it that there are some countries where, you know, the only tool that's available or affordable is a rotary. So it is a concern to them. They don't have access to all the cool orbitals we have here. In the well, United that is States. very true. I mean, hey, if so you got to use what you got to use. Yeah, you have so, about ready to say that. This same is thing. where it comes in to doing a test spot. So you, you want to if you're going to use a rotary only on a car and every car can have different paint, you want to find a horizontal surface and you want to dial in your process and inspect it nine ways a Sunday. Make sure it's perfect before you buff out the entire car. Okay. All right, I don't know if this is the same Facebook user. You, oh, hold on, hold on. You're turning off over there. <laughs> um, yep, now they're turning off behind me. Automatic timers, code, come on, really? They're LEDs. It's, it's um, sensors. Yeah, yeah, it's sensors. Mm, I got it, yeah, seems like it. Okay, Facebook user, I th might be the same person, might not. Are in single stage or lacquer paint, different process are in either polishing or sanding if you can. Um, no, not really. You know, again, back here on the stinger here, the black portion, that's single stage. I sanded right here, it, go to this compounded camera. it, and polished it with all the same things I used on the base coat clear coat portions that are white to our eyes. Uh, no, the only time you really got to be careful with single stage paint is, um, here, let me go deep on you. Uh-oh. Uh, you when ready, people? On, when you're working on clear coat, you're working on pure resin. When you're working on single stage paint, you're working on resin that has pigment in it that you're working on. And pigment type can affect paint hardness or paint softness. And the two extremes on the paint hardness and paint softness scale are single stage white paint is generally speaking the hardest paint because the pigment is titanium dioxide powder, which is a very hard mineral. It makes the matrix, the entire resin, very hard. The black paint on single stage, the, the, the pigment is carbon black. A simple form of carbon black is take a barbecue oh, oh, oh. hood, lift it up, grab that soot, that's carbon black. It's powder, it's very soft. You add that to the same resin that a white paint was made with, but now you're putting in the black carbon, fi or carbon black, that paint will now be very soft. So the pigment can adulterate or pollute or dilute or modify the hardness of the, th of the resin, uh, which we all call paint. So uh, when working on single stage, just be knowledgeable of that. So if someone brings you a classic car with single stage black paint, first of all, the paint's old, it's brittle, it's dried out and you don't know who buffed on it before you and what they use and it could be very thin and because it already is very soft you just want to be careful around things like raised body lines and edges that you don't burn through uh, last summer i buffed out a 1950 pontiac convertible oh, that was chad st john that with was the, asking with those the questions. original lacquer paint it was probably the softest paint i've ever worked on 
And when I was younger, before base coat, clear coat technology was introduced, a gentleman brought me a white Jeep. Uh, body shop had sanded down the hood and couldn't get their sandy marks out, so he brought it to me to see if I could, and I'm thinking, sure, I'm Mike Phillips, I can do this. I start buffing, yeah, no, sandy marks weren't coming out. Because uh, single stage, single stage white paint, titanium docks are very hard. Um, and you gotta consider back then, we didn't have the great technology we got today. We also didn't have uh, all the great sanding uh, products we have today, where maybe I couldn't have uh, compounded out those scratches, but I could have refined them with a, uh, very fine grit sanding, sanding paper or sanding disc, and then use the compound to pull the, set, the sanding marks out. All right, cool. Now we have- that, That's how I learned about how hard white paint can be. All right, we have our buddy Nunes. Hello, guys. This is Nunes from Portugal. We're gonna be kind of close over there in a couple weeks. Um, if you guys didn't know, we are going on a world tour, which I can, I'll put up, actually, I'll do it now. How about that? Mike and I are going on a world tour, and he is also going to be Doing a class with, as Kelly you see, Harris. It, with, with, you see it right here, it's Kelly Harris. He is going to be, these two are tag teaming two days, one day detailing classes where they are going over a ton of stuff. Ton of, ton of topics. Yeah. yeah. So if you're in the UK, France, Spain, Germany, Belgium, Holland, Sweden, Norway, any of those places, heck, if you're in Kansas or Toledo, Minnesota, or wherever, and you want to go, you're going to have to get a plane ticket to go over there. Yeah, better get signed up. Fast, I think the classes are almost sold out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very small window of time to get into that class. They're only allowing 15 people in. Per day. Per day. Yep. So, so. but no, um, so this class is, like I said, this is a part of our world tour that we're going on, uh, that we will be, let me just hide that. We're going to be over in the UK at Wax Dock, June 5th. Then we're coming back, we're going to Canada, the Berlin Classic, August 5th through the 7th. That's up in Canada. Then we head back over the pond, go to Germany, go to Auto Mechanica, which is September 13th through the 17th, and then we're back for SEMA. Yeah. All right, so then we have a class, uh, what is it, September 30th? Yes, yeah, the end of September, so Friday, September 30th, Saturday and Sunday, October 1st and October 2nd. That's my big three-day class where I cover more topics than anybody on planet Earth. Yeah. And this time around, yes. we're doing something a little different. That's right. We're ha if you want just the car only segment of the class, that would be Friday and Saturday. Yep. Or if you want just, I don't know why you wouldn't want to do the boat. I mean, you're already here. You can do the three-day class that has the car, Includes boat, the boat, and yep. everything else. Well, what it is is I've had some people that just are not interested in boat detailing. So well, I get that. So the, the thing well, I tell can... them is here's three things. One, a lot of your customers that own really nice cars also own a boat, and they're going to ask you, hey, you did a great job on my Jaguar, my Land Rover, my Mercedes-Benz. Can you do my boat? So you'll have those skills, and, and you'll have that experience to say yes or no, because after you sand and buff out a boat, you might not ever want to do it again. Um, the other thing is, is people that have boats, you know, they're going to say, hey, you did a great job on my boat. Can you do my cars? Yep. And, um, and then a lot of the skills that I teach for how to take a neglected boat and turn it into a respected boat transfer to car detailing. Yep. So, so, I mean, if you're already here, what I try to do when I, when I created these three-day classes, I try to make the topics compelling because the majority of the people that take these classes are flying here. So if you're going to fly, that's a set of airline tickets, a hotel, rental car, meals on the road. And if you're going to do it, might as well get it all in one trip you know, most profitable, most popular topics. But if you only want to take the car side, that's, that's good too. The boat side is a, a one day class, so. Quit moving dirt. Yeah, it needs that's some All Debbie, I'm hearing is Need some Debbie 40 on the old. Uh, I, I'm sorry thing. guys for him hitting that. Um, let's go here. I do believe this is Chad St. John again, because he did say that, that he was the one that was coming from uh, the group. I, yeah, go ahead. All right, <laughs> ACA 505 is like speed. Correct. Yes. It has more cut. It has more swirl removing ability. All right. Now, moving on. I'm just trying and, to push uh, you. Okay. Okay. Uh, quickly. Two inch, two inch calls 505 a blender. I thought that was really interesting. And, uh, and here's what he means by that. When, when most people, it's for body shops. So most people, you wreck a car, you don't wreck the whole thing. They don't paint the whole thing. You wreck the front right fender, maybe the hood. So they replace or repair those panels. They spray paint on those. They blend it into the adjacent panel so it has a uniform look. But here's the problem. 
Now you've got fresh paint next to old weathered paint. In a body shop, they're not like me and a lot of you detailers they are gonna spend tons and tons of hours on making a car perfect. They just wanna get in and get out. They wanna make the rest of the paint look pretty good. So you can buff out the old, the original factory paint with this product. It'll really closely match the brand new paint. So when the customer comes to pick it up, it's like, wow, my car looks amazing. Here's your money. So that's what it is, it's a blender. It blends the old weather paint and makes it to match the fresh new paint. So okay. it's a blender product. All right, I gotta push you along a little bit. All right, we have Detail Elegant. You must be overseas somewhere because you got the little things going on all over the place. Uh, let's bring him back on. Hi, Mike and Yancey, great job. One question, ACA 510, it, it can be used with foam pad correction or always with wool pad, thanks. Oh, no, both. In fact, I, I'll tell you a secret. The way I, I've been correcting a lot of my uh, sanding cars is I will cut it with wool on a rotary, and I will come back. If you look over here, can you shoot the camera over here, Yancey? Yep, you're, you're on. See these foam cutting pads? So what I do is I go back over the paint with the 510 with the foam cutting pad and orbital polisher, and that just enables me to remove uh, all the holograms, boom, like that. But also, uh, paint is forgiving. So maybe I didn't quite get all the sanding marks out, but if I go back over the cutting pad and, and the 510, then for sure I have. And then the polishing step just goes really quick. So this car back here was actually machine polished three times. Once with wool and 510, once with foam and uh, orbital with 510, and then with 520 and a foam finishing pad. Okay. And the results are flawless. It's absolutely flawless. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to push you a little bit along. This is where we're getting towards the end. So I got to push, push. Uh, we got Damien coming on. Do 3D1 and Rupes Uno Pure fall into similar or different categories in terms of chemical composition? Uh, they have their own chemists and their own formula and liquids. So I'd say chances are them being similar. They're the same category of product. They're a one step cleaner wax. But I have no idea who makes Rupes products. You know, we make all of our own products. I will tell you, I have used one. I like it. It's a good. Or, Uno. Oh, I have used Uno. It's a good product. Um, I would say um, our product will has, was, has better defect removal capabilities. That's a very light cutting cleaner wax or AIO. See, this I, is actually kind of a medium see, one. I, I didn't. I, to me, it was like very watery. It just. Yeah. I didn't like it. But anyways, that moving yeah. on. Um, 505 possible to correct coating if needed, and I do believe that, if I was correct, was Sarah Riles. That is a good question. Um, here's my take on that, and I, this question comes up a lot. Um, if you have a coated car, something happens, can you go back in and polish it without taking the coating off? So here's how I like to twist the, that question. After you polish the coated surface, how could you ever know the coating's still there, okay? How could you know? You can't. So since you can't know, just assume it's gone and do the steps it takes to recode it. Okay, all right. Um, now, if you were the ants or Adam, Adam, uh, the Adam, you could shrink yourself down, oh. walk around, go, oh, here's coating, here's no coating. I mean, <sighs> we can't do that. So you just have to assume it's gone because okay. you've abraded the surface. Okay, sorry, Sarah, that was Chad. See, that's where you guys need to allow the plug in to pull your guys' names over. So, uh, let's go here. 3D Van Nuys, very good class. Please do once a week. We've been here every week. Van Nuys. We'll be gone when we're in England, though. Um, we do these every Thursday. Thursday. For the month of May, it'll be at 4 o'clock. Then come June, when we get back from the UK, we'll be switching back to our original time. 3 o'clock. Um, it's just due to the fact that my daughter has no longer any band after school, and I gotta pick her up. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a little ways from our house. Just for let her, her drive your car. Well, yeah, she is. Don't do. She already is going to be driving already. <laughs> I mean, I remember she was like little, and now she's getting her driver's license. So yeah, they grow up too quick, man. Enjoy every minute of your kids. Um, I'm not even going to try your name. I'm sorry. Uh, you're from Ukraine. I hope you're safe over there in Ukraine. Mike. Mike. Okay. Hello from the Ukraine. I don't know your name. I wish I did. But you did come back in, um, and he would like to know, please tell the difference between 400, 500, and 510. 400, 500, and 510. That would be 1, 500, and 510. 400. 500, 
Oh, we and are still fixing that little thing before the next 510. video. Five ten. Okay, so here's the difference. Okay, so this is a hybrid compound polish. So what that means is you could use this with a rotary buffer and a wool pad and cut like crazy, or you could use it with a foam pad on an orbital and cut like crazy, or you could switch over to a soft foam finishing pad in any orbital and use it as a finishing polish. So that makes it a very versatile product. You can do everything with just one product. So very versatile. It's the perfect product for any detailer. Okay, so that's one. And then when we got the 500 and the 510, so this uses, uh, this uses the alpha ceramic alumina abrasive technology. This is a fast cutting compound, primarily for use with wool pads. I've used it with foam, it seems to work okay, but it was formulated, it was formulated for guys in the body shop that always use wool pads on a rotary and they're just looking for a conventional compound to cut sanding marks fast. That's what 500 is. 510 is our most latest abrasive technology and it cuts faster, it's formulated specifically for hard clear coats, okay? They'll both do it, this will just do it faster. This costs a little more because it takes more processes to make the powder. Okay, no, that makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, you'll get great results with all of them. If you're in a body shop, you should really have a dedicated compound. I, I would say one is a good product, but not for doing body shop. Well, well, not for doing the, the sanding removal for a body shop. I mean, why do that when you should have a compound? Yeah, and yeah. also, you know, um, if you are working on your cars and stuff like that, you might have that one scratch. You don't need to compound your entire car, but there might be one section that you need a little bit stronger and you just want to get in and out. That's where having one of the compounds in your arsenal to help out with that. Exactly. All right, so with that, let's go to this camera. Then let's go back to this one. Get me out of there. Mike, we're on camera one right there. Okay. And so I hope that this video uh, answered a lot of your guys' questions because you guys have definitely been asking this one quite a lot on the detailing group that we have and also on the 3D page. And I mean, you probably feel quite a few of questions through I email try to and answer stuff like as many as form. I can. All right. So now you magically arranged them. I had cleaner waxes, one. The original 501 and 52, 500, 510, and 520. Well, I separate them by class because that's what this video was. These but. are combinations. All right. Well, there you go. Screenshot this. Oh, well, I, I'll make a picture of it and send it to you guys. All right. So with that next week, do we know? Actually, Kirby we were going to try to do a super pre-soak. I have a car that has been, not been washed in months. It sits underneath an oak tree. It's absolutely filthy dirty. This, dirty. this is a product. Uh, that you would spray on the car first, let it dwell, it will soften, loosen, penetrate, age in dirt, make it easier to pressure wash off before you actually wash the car. <laughs> Thanks. So, I keep telling yeah. camera one, and he keeps looking at camera so, three. Yeah, so, uh, mostly because a lot of people ask about that product, and I think over in the UK they call them uh, TFRs, traffic film removers. Okay. We don't use that term in the States, but that's, that's kind of what this product is. It's a TFR, it's a traffic film remover, or just for cars that are really dirty to pre-soak them before you actually start washing them. Well, since we're going to the UK, I think we need to start practicing that in the shop, that we need to, instead of the morning, we yeah. have to drink tea, <laughs> no more coffee, yeah. Yeah. and start calling all the things by the UK, so that way when we get there, yeah. We're not like, oh, look at those crazy Americans coming over. Yeah. I, I'll also have a couple other cars there. We could show all, anything. So yeah, uh, just yeah I was just going to say, it, it's kind of open right now. It all depends on what's coming in. Um, I know Kirby, I don't know if you were in on that email. He had a good suggestion also about um, what you guys would like to see. And me, personally, I, him and I, we can come up with a million different ideas and different things to put oh, on the video. All the tire dressings. Yeah. And... W we really would like doing what you guys ask, and that's the reason why we're here, is to answer your questions. He knows it all. Unfortunately, a lot of it's gotten stuck in between my two ears from being around him you for so long. You film it all. I film it all. Um, but I want to know what your questions are, and that's what he wants to know. So we're always open to your suggestions. So if you have suggestions for videos, just put it in the comments or shoot us an email, shoot us a message. All of our bios or links where you can follow us are in the, uh, the um, description on either YouTube or on any of the Facebooks. Um, I have a, another classic Corvette coming in that needs the back window sanded and buffed. It also needs wiper marks taken out of the glass. Oh, well, it's a 1962 yeah. Corvette. All right. 
With that, I think we're done for the day. We are a little bit over. Thank you all. We still got quite a few of you that are still on there. Um, thank you. I mean, this one I think was our most successful one. We had tons of people. People on love pa uh, paint correction. You know. <laughs> How do you get the scratches so, out so of the car? When we do a, a live class on cleaning carpet. It probably won't be as exciting. No, that'll be tumbleweeds, and you'll hear crickets <laughs> in the background. We you know, might have one or two. It's important to know how to clean carpet, but it's not very exciting. This is you don't see the carpet. This is from more the exciting. Taking this from neglected to respected is just so much more fun than cleaning carpet. Yeah, so. I, I agree with you. Holy. So, until next time, please, 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 like, share, subscribe, and <laughs> tune in next week at four o'clock. Same time, same 3D channel. Hey, I like that 3D <laughs> channel. And yeah. until then, Mike, since I got all this out, you get to put it all back, <laughs> and I'm gonna take your hard work for a hard, nice uh, trip around. Yes, no, maybe, kinda? Yeah. Go for it. All right, bye.